Welcome to the Neighborhood Church. We're so glad that you've joined us today for our service here online. I want to encourage you, fill out one of the connect cards. If there's any questions you have, if there's any way we can connect with you or serve you, go to our website, theneighborhoodchurch.org, you can find the connect card there. At this time, we're going to head into the auditorium where worship's already in progress. I have heard a sound coming on the wind, changing hearts and minds, and healing brokenness. I feel a generation through despair. I hear a generation full of faith declare in our song. It will be out of the darkness. We will rise and say. Peace. 
love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty bear bowed down with care. God gave his only son to win. His erring child he reconciled. You and I pardon from our sin. shall forevermore endure. How measureless and strong, saints and angels' song we sing. Holy, holy. Ancient time shall pass away, and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall. When men here refuse to pray, all the rocks, hills, and mountains call. God's love so sure still shall endure, all measureless and strong. Redeeming grace for Adam's race to be the saints and angels' song. ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above, would drain the oceans dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretch from sky to sky. God, how rich and pure, it shall forevermore endure. How measureless and strong, saints and angels' song we sing. today and welcome again. I uh, did a little bit of family news coming up, but first just want to thank you for all your giving and the ways in which you give to our community. You can see many of them on the screen at the moment, but thank you so much just for your commitment to the work and ministry of the Neighborhood Church and to what goes out of here to our city, our province, and really around the world. And so a couple things for family news I just want to make mention of. Next Up Eats is happening next weekend, April 20th, 21st, and all three of our venues after the service We'll serve you food, we'll have lunch together, we'll chat, we'll get to know you, and you'll get to know about us, our culture, our mission, and really just ask any questions that maybe you have about us. So if you've only been attending here recently or have never attended one of these, this is for you. Make sure to sign up online, the neighborhoodchurch.org slash eats. Register there. We'd love to have you with us. Come out and join us. Also, baptism weekend coming up again, May 4th and 5th. 
exciting. If that's you, maybe you missed the last one and you don't want to miss this one, please fill out your Connect card or let one of us know at the church. We'd love to have you baptized that weekend and just celebrate with you as you take that step in your walk with Christ. At this time, we're going to look at our memory verse for this month. Why don't you read it with me? All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we've been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1, 3. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me for I took a breath you breathed your life in me so so kind to me Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God When I was your foe Still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth You paid it all for me Yes, you did And you have been so, so of 
God. Oh, He chases me down, fights till I found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away.
to be uh, here tonight. As uh, many of you know, we, uh, we call this church home when we're not traveling, and, uh, and then, but a lot of times I do end up traveling quite a bit, uh, visiting a number of our churches around uh, the province, around the district, uh, of which this church is a part of a larger family. It's always good to be reminded you're not alone, you're not an island unto yourselves. Uh, we are part of a larger family, over 50 churches across Saskatchewan. Uh, and I get to uh, be involved in quite a number of them, uh, sometimes for fun reasons, sometimes for less than fun reasons, but uh, tonight's a fun reason. And so it's great to be part of this tonight. I was told I had a hard 30 minutes, that's it. No more, no less, no, maybe the less, but not on the more. Uh, I might get the cane if I go too long, so I better cut my preamble short, eh, Pastor Louie? Yeah, okay. I asked him when he told me 30 minutes, I said, well, brother, do you believe in miracles? And, uh, and he, I heard that, and I heard, yes, I do. So, uh, praise God. Well, I want to share tonight a message on courage, but heading into courage, uh, the, antith the, the opposite, if you will, of, of courage in many ways is fear, right? And, and as I think about fear, I think about much of my life story, and I'm not going to share my life story tonight, but uh, much of my life has been defined by that four-letter word of fear, uh, fear of sickness uh, dominated me uh, so much of my life as being uh, afraid of, of things that would make me nauseous or sick in some way. And so, you know, that, that kept me captive. Uh, fear of rejection, uh, parents' divorce, and all the things that would have marked me as a child and, and things that, that took place there. Fear of failure. Uh, if I try that, and what if happens if I fail? What happens if I come up short? What happens if I disappoint people? Uh, many of us here would say, yeah, I, I, I get that. Uh, I've, I've struggled with various fears. Maybe some of the ones I've shared, uh, maybe fear of change, uh, maybe fear of heights. How many like heights? I don't really care for heights. Uh, sometimes I'm up on high places and, and I just start praying, Jesus, come quickly. Uh, fear of public speaking. Uh, you know, in 2013, the Times reported that fear of public speaking uh, was, for some people, worse than the fear of death, meaning that at a funeral, you'd rather be in the box than on the stage. But we know, uh, all of us know, uh, what it's like to have fear, to struggle. Uh, the issue, of course, is that, is that when fear is so dominant, is that, is that fear, as it interplays into our lives, can, can have an effect that it, that, that it reduces our lives in many ways. We reduce our lives to accommodate our fears. So if I'm afraid of that, I'm not going to do that, right? So, so for me, you know, I, I can't do that because... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned or I'm afraid of what might take place, or I won't go there because, you know, so for me it was, you know, fear of sickness, fear of heights, well, getting on a plane, uh, that's, that's kind of anxious, anxiety-inducing, so, 
uh, or, or struggling with insecurities, you know, I can't possibly be a leader, and God says, do you want to be superintendent? How many times we know that we end up reducing our lives to accommodate our fears? So today, uh, I'm not talking directly about fear. I am talking about fear, but, but I want to shift the narrative a little bit more toward courage because, because God, I believe, has a desire for us that we would not live in fear. We would not live captive to fear, but rather that we would be strong and courageous. And whenever you think about courage and you think about that within Scripture, it's really hard not to land on Joshua and looking at the person and work of Joshua. The, you know, consider Joshua for a moment. He's, he's a man that was at a time called to lead a multitude of, of, of people, not just a, a, a multitude like in the sense of, of, you know, a couple hundred people or whatever. You know, we're talking several million people that he's called to lead. And, and, and people at that that had a history of, of complaint and whining and, and uh, let's pack up, let's head back to Egypt kind of narrative. Uh, Joshua uh, had, was called upon to lead uh, in a time following the probably arguably the most famous leader in all of Israel's history, Moses. Uh, he was not just called upon to, to, to step in the gap and fill some pretty big shoes and, and keep the whole bunch of people happy. He was also called upon to lead those people into a new territory and to help them to, to conquer a land. And so the Lord commands Joshua three times with these words, be strong and courageous. Let's read the passage in question today. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place that you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river of the Euphrates and all the Hittite country uh, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous." because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn it from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous, successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Three times, be strong and courageous. I believe there's something here for each one of us tonight, uh, regardless of your status, regardless of your position. I know tonight is a special night. We're doing an installation service for your pastor, but, but, but this is not a Pastor Louie and Jenny message. This is an everybody message here tonight. Because I believe God wants to speak to us here. And I want to give you kind of, uh, based on these three commands to Joshua, I want to give you three thoughts in regards to courage. First of all, courage for others. I don't know what you find easier, uh, courage for yourself or courage for others. But, but, but when I think about that for myself and I think as a, as, as a husband and as a father, I find it far easier to have courage for my family than just for myself. And so I might be terrified to get on that plane, but if I know my kid is sick and hurting and they need me there, guess what, I'm gonna get on the plane. I'm going to be courageous because they need me. I'm going to have courage because, because you know, like when they need me to be strong, I'm going to, I'm going to aim to be strong. 
We're driving the other day and on the highway, and, and, and my wife was doing a great job driving, but this, this tr truck had crowded us, and, and, and the roads were, were covered in snow and ice, and, and, and we hit the edge of that, and, 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 and the tires came a little loose, and we were swerving right next to a semi-truck. My daughter grabs my arm. I don't let out a little girl scream in the moment because she needs me to be strong but inside the little girl screams going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she grabbed my arm. She, you know, it, it was, you know, by God's grace, uh, and she did a great job. I was in the back. I was so tired. I was in the back of the SUV, which is the worst, most uncomfortable place you can imagine. They say seven-seater. They lied. <laughs> but we find it easier to be courageous for those that we love when they need us to be strong, to be strong. Well, the Lord commands Joshua, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Notice this, because you have a higher purpose, that you are going to lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. That these people had, 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 had uh, been wandering in the desert for 40 years, and, and, and they had been, you know, Without a land, they needed a land, and the fulfillment of God's promise to them was, Joshua, you need to be strong and courageous to lead them, because if you don't get strong and courageous, if you're not strong and courageous to lead them, they're not going to get into that place that God has for them. God had a plan and a purpose for the people, and Joshua, you're my instrument to do this, so be strong and courageous that these people will inherit all that I would have for them. Now, we can look at Joshua here, and we can say, yeah, Joshua, you do it. Uh, we've read the book. We know, we know what happens, and we're excited. But what about the book of our lives, friends? What about you and I? You see, here's the reality is that just as Joshua was called to be courageous for the sake of others, so you and I have a mission from God to lead others into the promise that God has from the promise of salvation, the promise of knowing Jesus. We each have that mission that Jesus gave us. It's not for the select few. In fact, the scripture, if we were to look at Matthew 28, Jesus gives the one big thing to his church, not just to, a, to, to the 12 disciples. It was for a broader scope than that, to go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded. This is the mission of Jesus, that we would love our neighbor, that we would care for those that do not know him. And the Lord is saying, I think, to us tonight that just as Joshua was instrumental in leading the people of Israel into the promise of God, so you are going to be instrumental in the lives of the people around you. Friends, be strong and courageous. Be courageous for others. Be courageous because God has a mission and a plan, and you're a part of that mission and plan. There are times we can be afraid to share our faith, fear of rejection, fear of, of, of making mistakes. I, I, I don't think I can do that. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not gifted that way. I don't think I can even talk to my neighbors or share anything with my neighbors. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something is that your fear will continue to reduce you to that small box of limitation Friends, be strong and courageous. Because there's people who need you. The second thing is this, is that we need a courage that is rooted. Whereas the first was about, about mission, this is, this is about truth and obedience. And, and, and so the Lord says to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my mo servant Moses gave to you. Keep it in front of you. Meditate on it. I, I, want, to, I want to say something today. Uh, maybe I'm going to ruffle some feathers. That's okay. I'm not being installed as pastor here. It's fine. Courageous, being, being courageous, having courage is not about being bold and brash. 
Courage is not about being bold and brash. It's not about being loud and proud. It's not elitist. You know, there's some people that come off, and you and I know these people. Maybe you are one of those people. I don't know. Bless you, whatever. Here's the thing. Some people come off as courageous, but they can just simply be arrogant. Some people come off as courageous, but they're just crazy. See, courage isn't isn't about just being bold and brash. It's not about being loud and proud. It's not about shouting. This is, you know, it's not about claiming rights or anything. It's about doing what is right. It's about living right. And this goes on two ends of the scale. Either you can be the wild child and doing everything wild and crazy and look at me, I'm, I'm just out there and I'm courageous and I'm yelling and I'm loud. Or you can be on the other side of things where it's like, you know, like I'm, I just want to be accommodating and, and, and I just want to, you know, where, where we begin to, to abdicate from, from truth or forego truth for convenience. I just don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to speak up. You know, these two poles are at play, aren't they? And the Lord tells Joshua, Joshua, don't turn to the right or to the left. Now, I don't think he's talking politics, but maybe, no, maybe not. Don't turn to the right or the left, but to keep God's word ever before you, to be rooted in God's word. It's not about putting on airs, it's not about putting on, you know, just this bunch of energy, it's about being rooted. One of my favorite passages of scripture is Jeremiah 17, where the prophet is, is, has been saying, you know, curse is the one who trusts in man and puts his confidence in the flesh. You know, it's like a, a, a bush in the wasteland. But, but, but then it shifts and it says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It leaves, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Why? Because the tree is rooted The tree has confidence. The tree is secure. The tree can be strong and courageous because it is drawing from that that, that stream of living water. It has no fear. It has no worries. And I want to tell you, friends, is that for us to have courage, it's not just about being out there and being loud and whatever else. It's about being secure in our faith in Christ, living in truth and in obedience. Now, I, I tag that because we can say we're all about truth, But Jesus says in Matthew chapter seven, what does he say? He says, you know, if if, if you're gonna be, take my words and put them into practice, you're like a wise man who built his house on the rock. It's not about just taking my words and, 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 and hitting somebody over the head with them, but to live the gospel of Jesus Christ, to make the gospel of Jesus Christ center to our lives, to how we live and how we, how we interact with people and that we love our neighbor and we care about those in need and, 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 and we live pure and godly and, and, and that is courageous. In a world that says just live as you want to live, for us to live in accordance with God's word requires courage. To be held firmly, to not go to the right or to the left, but to keep God's word ever before us to build our lives, if you will, on the rock of Christ. Finally, courage amidst fear. So we talked about courage for others and having the mission of Jesus. We talked about courage that's rooted in God's word and being people that live in in, in truth and obedience to God's word. But but, but this this element here, I, I... is, is there anybody here that is, that is so spiritual and so gifted that you are never afraid? I'd, I'd really like to shake your hand. I think all of us have fear. We've all struggled with fear. See, courage, courage is not about, about not ever having fear. Franklin D. Roosevelt, he says, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear. So you get on that plane when you don't want to get on that plane because there's something more important at the other end. 
Well, that something for us in our Christian walk is, is not a something, it's a someone. It's, it's the presence of Jesus. For Joshua, uh, coming up to the, to, the, uh, to the Jordan River, this was not his first time there. Forty years earlier, he had been to this place before. He and 11 others had spied out the land of Canaan, had returned, had given a report. You can read that in Numbers uh, chapter 12 and 13. And, and, and 10 of them gave a, uh, this bad report. And they said, we, we, we can't attack them. They're stronger than we are. There's giants in the land. We saw the Nephilim there. And you know what? We, we, we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we seem like the same to them. We're too small. We're too weak. And this report gets everybody stirred up, and, 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 and they're starting to pack up their things, and where are you going? We're going back to Egypt. There was nothing good in Egypt. But Caleb and Joshua, they, they, out of the ten spies, these two stood and, and they tore their robes and they said, no, 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 friends, no, friends. This land is good. It's before us. Let's go. And they say, do not rebel against the Lord. Do not be afraid of the people in the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. You know, it's interesting that we will devour them in different translations. It's like they're, they're, they're as helpless prey to us or, or they're bread for us. Anybody scared of bread? Maybe they're gluten-free people, but... Uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in Swift Current driving. I used to pastor there. I was driving along. One day, the Lord spoke to my heart, asked me a question. I said, Paul, if, if you were one of the 12 spies, would you be one of the 10 or one of the two? That question was not fun. Because I, I want to say I would be one of the two. I really want to be one of the two because we know how the story goes. I want to be one of the two, but there's many times in my life I think, oh God, I need your grace. So it might be one of the ten. But fear in this instance in Numbers chapter 14, fear would win the day and the people would, would cower away and the people rebelled and, 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 and this all happened. Why? Because fear is contagious. Did you know that? Fear is contagious. And so this perhaps is why years later Moses in giving the instruction to the people in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 20 would, would, would say, you know, and he, he would say to them, if, if, you know, the officers, shall, you know, if you're going to be called to the army, the officers, I kind of got to paraphrase there a little bit. The officers would say to those in the army, has anyone built a new house and haven't lived in it yet? Uh, okay, go home because you might die and somebody else will live in your house. Has anyone help, you know, planted a vineyard and you haven't enjoyed the fruit? Well, you better go home because you might die and somebody else will enjoy it. Anybody else been pledged to a woman not married her? Well, you know, Kate, same thing. And then the officers shall add, is anyone afraid or faint-hearted? Let him go home so that his fellow soldiers will not become disheartened too. Fear is contagious. Friends, God wants us to have courage. Not to be ruled by fear. And, 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 and the call to Joshua's life was, Joshua, you need to be courageous. You need to be strong and courageous because fear, fear is contagious. But let me tell you something else. So is courage. And Joshua was called to be a catalyst of courage. Courage that was rooted in the greater uh, reality of who God is, the presence of God, because he says, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I want to ask you, friends, here tonight, do you want your life marked by fear and restriction and re reduction of yourself, or do you want to be a, a, a man and woman that is full of courage, full of faith, full of expectation, full of hope, full of joy? 
Are you, are you wanting to be a person that has courage to engage the mission that God has given you? Yes, you. In your family and in your school and in your workplace and among your neighbors. I believe that the area my wife and I live in, we're called to be there to love our neighbors. And we have a great group of neighbors and we were all outside watching me rake my lawn today. It was great. We socialize, we visit. I invited one of them to church. Courage that is rooted, courage that is firm, courage that is not ruled by fear. I wanna tell you something, friends, here today. If that's what you want for your life, I can tell you how it won't happen. It won't happen if you surround your life with fearful people. If the voices of fear dominate, uh, you, you, you know the saying, right? That, that, that says, you know, show me your friends and what? I'll show you who you are or I'll show you your future. Or we say about kids that got into trouble, you know, all those trouble kids, you know, they, 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 you know, they got in trouble, but you know, in all honesty, you know, they fell in with the what? The wrong crowd. Well, the Bible reminds us and again and again that, 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 you know, Paul says bad company corrupts good character or walk with the wise. Proverbs says become wise, associate with fools, get in trouble. And, 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 and so this recognition that, 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 that we, we, we tend to collect from those that were around. Well, who did Joshua hang around? Well, he hung out with Moses. And he hung out with God. Exodus chapter 24, Moses is going to go up on the mountain uh, and, and, and get the law of God, and, 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 and Moses sets out with Joshua, his aide, and Moses went up on the mountain of God. Well, where did Joshua go? He went up the mountain. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend, and then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. He just stayed in God's presence. And the Lord told Moses in Deuteronomy 3, commission Joshua, encourage and strengthen him to lead the people. Joshua had, 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 had a person of courage, a person of faith speaking into his life. I want to ask you, who do you have speaking into your life? Is it the naysayers and the ones that say, oh, we can't do that? Is it the complainers and we become a complainer? Is it the gossiper and we become the gossiper? Or is it a person of great faith and courage? And there's just something catalytic about it. A number of years ago, my wife and I were on a trip. We were in BC. I had a, a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in at that time 15 years. He was one of my groomsmen, hadn't seen him since. And we got together with them around a fire pit that night and we began to talk and they just began to speak out of faith and speak out of the joy of Jesus. And I can tell you, it was so significant for me that night. It impacted me. It refreshed me. Friends, I, I know what it's like to live a reduced life the fear of sickness and heights that would keep me restrained. I, would, I wouldn't go to friends' places when I was young because, you know, what if I got sick when I was there? All these things that just kept me locked in, a, in, in, in isolation or the fear of rejection and people-pleasing and trying to be a pastor and you have that tendency to want to make everybody happy. Does it work? Pastors in the room? Everyone said, if you want to make everybody happy, sell ice cream. Unless you're gluten-free. No, gluten? Lactose, that's the word. Insecurities, all these things that can keep us penned in. But guys, friends, in my life, I've had to do this. I encourage it for yours. We, we need to separate ourselves from the voices of fear, choosing instead to trust God and his good mission. We, we, we need to, to find our identity and, and rootedness and direction in, in, in God's word first and foremost and, and be rooted and established in the truest of, of what God says and who God says that we are, that we, that we need to be surrounded by those who speak faith and not fear and apprehension. This, 
this is my heart for the neighborhood church. That the neighborhood church would be a church that is strong and courageous. That you, friends, as a, as a, as a member of this church or a visitor of this church would be so filled with, with the awesome power and presence of God that you, are, that you have an excitement about you of what God's going to do this year, what God's going to do this season. Yesterday was, a, was, was good, and the days past have been good, and maybe there have been hard moments in there, but God has brought you through those times and into the now and, and into this new season and saying, friends, let us be strong and courageous. Let us believe God for great things, amen? Amen. I'd just like to take a moment just to pray for you. I'll just invite you to stand for a moment and, and then we're gonna invite, after I pray, I'm gonna invite Pastor Louie and Jenny to come and to join me up, up front here. Father, you see each one here tonight. Each one has a story. Each one has their own experiences. But Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you would, by your grace and by your mercy, help us to be strong and courageous. Lord, you've seen the fears. You've seen the struggles. You've seen the questions. But God, we lay them all aside right now. And we say, God, let us be strong and courageous that we would enter into your mission that we be rooted in your word, and that God, that we would be people that, that, that are not catering to fear any longer, but Lord, that we would listen to you and listen to the voices of courage around us. Fill us, we ask, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Louie and Jenny, come. The rest of you have a seat. Well, today is, is uh, it's a lot of fun doing pastor installations. Uh, w what we're going to do here today is, is, is I want to give them a short encouragement here, and then I'm going to ask them some questions, some commitments that they're going to be making to you. They're going to feel like they're getting married again. And then I'm going to ask you, friends, to make some commitments to them. And so you will have a chance to respond to them as well. Um, Pastors Louie and Jenny, my encouragement to you today is, is really simple. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous because God has called you to lead this assembly. God has given you a mission to serve him here. Be strong and courageous. Keep rooted in God's word. Keep holding strong and, and being established, putting it into practice, being founded and unmovable on God's word. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Surround yourselves with people that are full of confidence and courage, with faith, knowing that God is with you. But I want to tell you something. Joshua wasn't just told three times to be strong and courageous. Upon stepping into his leadership role, he began to, to, to give some direction to the people and, 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 and the people responded and they said, we're in, we're with you. In fact, they actually used much stronger language like, and if anybody doesn't obey you, we're gonna put them to death. We're not gonna go quite to that level here. <laughs> but they finish with those words. Could you just put that last slide up for me, please, on the on the PowerPoint, they finish with these words, be strong and courageous. Just leave that slide up for me because at the end, I'm gonna ask you to speak to your pastors those words. First Peter chapter five, verses one through four, to the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder and witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to his flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. And so I ask you these questions. 
and you both can answer, we do with us. Do you acknowledge the call of God in your life to pastor? And do you specifically recognize your call to serve the neighborhood church in the cities of Warman and Saskatoon and region? We do. And do you promise to serve this church with the best of your ability, loving them, preaching the word, and praying for them? We do. And do you promise to do the work of an evangelist to make sure that this church never loses sight of its responsibility to share the gospel and reach the lost? We do. And do you promise to live according to God's word and as well according to the principles and requirements of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada? We do. That's good, because Elaine is here and she would be coming after you. <laughs> church, would you stand? Do you commit to supporting this couple as they pastor this church and community both in word and in deed? Do you commit to serving them in accomplishing the mission of this church, the mission that Jesus has commanded us by both your financial giving and in your service of reaching those that are not yet here? And do you commit to praying for your pastors and for your church and community? And would you also repeat this, with, or say it with me? Be strong and courageous. Let's do it again, a little more umph. Be strong and courageous. One more time, they're just getting it. Be strong and courageous. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for your pastors. I'm going to invite the board and the pastors of this uh, uh, that, are, that are present with us today. Uh, I want to invite uh, your family members, uh, anybody else, I'm, so, I'm forgetting, the staff and the elders. Uh, would you just all come, just gather up here, just come running down like the price is right. Just uh, lay hands on them in front, lay hands on the ones that you're behind, and we'll just kind of, uh, and would you just extend your hands toward uh, this, uh, this pastoral couple and their family, and let's just begin to pray over them, and just believe that God is going to pour out upon them, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that, that, that you have poured out your power upon this couple, that you have anointed them in your power, that you have filled them, Lord. And Lord, I pray that as this couple pastors this assembly, Lord God, that your grace would ever be about them. I pray, Father, that you would give them uh, wisdom, Lord God, for the various challenges that they face. Lord, that they would have your mind. Lord, that you would give them a great love for this church and for this community, Lord, as they, as they give and as they sow and as they seed and as they lead, Lord, they would do so out of that, that depth of love, Lord, that you've called and, and, and placed within in them. Father, would you grant them uh, a protection upon them, Lord God, a protection upon their family, Lord God, as they lead. Uh, would you guard them against the evil one, Lord, that would seek to, to steal, kill, and destroy? Would you, would you protect their health? Would you protect them in all ways, Lord? Would you provide for their every need? Father, I pray in Jesus' precious name, Lord God, for a season of abundance, Lord, upon this church. Lord God, I thank you for the good foundation that has been built uh, during the season with the Drizners, and we bless them as they have entered into this new season themselves. I pray, Father, that as the church moves forward in the, into the now, Lord God, that you would just build upon that great foundation. And God, that you be glorified here, we pray in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, amen. 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 So we have a gift from the, from the district for them. Uh, we, it's our tradition to give a, a book to the pastor and usually flowers uh, to, to, to the wife. But in this case, um, she wanted Starbucks. And so, so I got some decaf coffee. I'm just kidding. 
You have to know her. She doesn't do decaf. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but it's actually the coffee stuff is actually for both of you. And there's a book in there. So uh, bless you guys. Thanks for having me here tonight. Thanks for having Amen. We are excited about what the future has for us as a church. Amen? As we, uh, as we wrap up tonight, I just uh, uh, thank you to you as the Neighborhood Church. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got some friends here from, uh, from ages gone by. Uh, we, we've got uh, a couple in the back, Dean and Esther Garreau. I'm calling you guys up in a second. Who were a part of our young adults ministry some 24 years ago when we were fresh into ministry. And then uh, we've got our friends... Uh, Nolan, who's at the back, and we're calling up his wife, Janelle, and two of their four kids, Lauren and Ella, come on up. They're going to sing a special for us. Uh, Nolan and Janelle were the very first new people to ever attend our church when we pastored in Carlisle, and uh, we've uh, been journeying together for uh, 21 years. They've been a blessing to us, and uh, they're going to be a blessing to you all tonight as they, uh, they lead a special number. Pastor Paul just preached like the best sermon to install your new pastor. This man is courageous. And I remember, I do still remember that far back, um, that his, the thing that he would always say to our church in Carlisle was, we will do anything short of sin to win people to Christ. And he is that courageous leader to, to lead you into this next season. And uh, as I was looking at music for this, um, I really my heart just really resonated with a song about the Great Commission. And I just want to encourage you that, that Jesus is not done, that we have so much more work to do. And so I want to read that, and then we're going to sing um, for you the, the commission. So this is from Matthew 27. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen? Amen. See my hands and look at my feet It's okay if it's hard to believe I have faith you will do greater things It's my time to go But before I leave journey, the end of 
neighborhood church. With great strength and in great courage, we are going to go and we are going to tell the world about Jesus. We are going to go, we are going to step out into our neighborhoods, into our places of employment, into wherever God leads us, and we are going to tell the world in great strength and courage about Jesus Christ. And people's lives will be forever changed because we were obedient to the call of Jesus in our lives. People's lives will be eternally changed because you and I were obedient to the call of Jesus on our lives. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our service today at the Neighborhood Church. Truly hope it was a blessed time for you. Um, hope you have a great week. Make sure to join us next weekend, Next Step Beats, if that applies to you. We'd love to see you out for that. We've had church. Let's go be the church. God bless you.